Okay, breaking down AI generative fill right now. So we're gonna break it down and show you how to do this. Okay guys, it is actually way too early in the morning right now and I'm not feeling good either, but we have to go and shoot the new AI thing that everyone is talking about. So let's go. We're gonna try to find a cool place to try to like demonstrate. Not only that you can change building structures, but you can change like the background and even like your actual look to your face and like clothes and everything, right? So let's get up going. Oh, it's way too early. Ali is ready to go. Mess up your hair. Okay. <laughs> we might do this one. Okay, so we came to this spot in downtown. I think this will be perfect for the shots that we're actually looking for. Something to kind of draw the eye, but enough to actually like be able to manipulate with Photoshop. So we're gonna try to set some stuff up, get some shots and angles to demonstrate, and then we're gonna go home and break this down. We're gonna edit it, show you guys how we do it in Photoshop. Um, so let's get to it, let's go. Okay, so this is our first shot. Uh, the reason why I picked a standard wall is because all of this can change quite easily. So it's a pretty standard shot, but it allows for the most manipulation when it comes to pose. So we're gonna show you in a second, but basically your end result is gonna look something like this. Pretty smooth. So yeah, let's go on to like the next shot now. Uh, this is a pretty standard good shot. The rest of them are gonna be a little more tricky. So let's do that. So everyone's wondering, what's the possibility of generative AI? I, I mean, I guess that's something. Okay, so what can you actually all change? I mean, you can change just about anything. You can change this. Okay, um, let's get back to the actual studio. Let's edit, let's break things down. I'm gonna show you guys my workflow and how I actually pull this off. So let's go back to the crib. Okay guys, um, no, I did not forget about you. I know time has passed, but I'm gonna show you how to pull this effect off inside of Adobe. So let's do it. So the first thing you wanna do is open your clips. Let's see which clip we wanna actually use. So we have our first shot, right? To keep it as simple as possible, what I would do is come in here just like this, know where you'd wanna actually put your mask, probably somewhere just around here, right? And then you're gonna click on this, export frame. This is one of the essential parts, right? So export the frame, make sure this is going to your downloads or wherever you can actually find it easier. My downloads are the easiest thing to find for me and then make sure it's in JPEG. There's a bunch of different ones. Make sure it's in JPEG so it's almost a picture format and okay so that exported that frame right so now we're going to want to go into photoshop so if you don't have photoshop get photoshop obviously all the adobe cloud is what i do with all of my stuff because it's just very easy to keep track of everything so you're going to go to your downloads where i saved it so you're going to take your picture now drop it into adobe and this is where it actually starts to happen right so there's a select subject there's a remove background but I like to either use a lasso, the selection, or just in this case, obviously it's a very easy selection. So we can just go here and select it clean out. So this I found that works the best, but if you wanna have a more select, like a spot on, you can always use the keen tool. You can come here, here, and right here, here, and just make sure it's keyed off the frame. And then here, boom. And then what you wanna do is do selection, okay? So here's where the actual cool stuff happens. You press generative fill, and you can say whatever you want. Very, my phone won't stop going off. Problems, I know, I'm just so popular. It's just like, leave me alone. Oh, people nowadays. Okay, back to it. So you can either say, put me in space, put me here, put me there. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say, let's do change wall. Very simple, nothing crazy, but you will know very quickly, the more descriptive you wanna be, the better the results will be. If you wanna make it very broad, 
it will be very broad such as this it okay first one it's a very plain simple wall do we want that mm, no i want to do something different let's do put art on the wall let's do that put art on the wall let's see if that makes it any more interesting right now uh it's not looking that good i like this one the most i think it looks really good and what you're gonna do now is uncheck that so this is like the biggest thing if you don't want to actually go in and have to key everything out one by one i'd remove this i'd go here and then export file export png and what i would do is have a name junior fill ai come in here and change it to be youtube one okay so that would be my name for it and i'll save and then what you could do now is go to each of them and you have all of this list now so you can go here you can file export png now go here paste now that's two save that i like the heart one it was kind of interesting you go file export it's png paste three and the biggest thing is just to try to have different ones. So a lot of these are looking a little too, too alike. So let's add some more color to the prompt. Okay, so I like this one too. And you can do this as many times as possible. Obviously, the more times you do it, the more professional and elaborate it's going to look in my opinion. But let's see how this one turns out. See, I think this one looks a little more creative too. We can do that. We can now bring these all back in. We have them all here now. We are going to make a file new bin and just call this Adobe Photoshop. Keep it simple, name that, and now you can bring all of your bins in here. Boom. So the second I snap is where I wanna actually see it, right? Snap. This is where I'll put a mark and that's where we'll put everything else. Second I snap is where we'll get these. And all of these are pretty, pretty long. It's going to be very quick. So let's see how this looks. Right now it's not looking bad. So we can go here and this is what it looks like. So right now it's not looking bad. I think this will probably be the out point. I think all we're gonna do is speed these up. Since this is just a tutorial, I'm just gonna duplicate them, slide them over. Now do that. Maybe take a couple random ones for the middle. Now we'll do that. I'll take these and that will be the end right there. So let's see how this looks. And that's how it'll look. So of course, if you want, you can go in way more detail. If you wanna go and mask it out, you can make it a lot more sharp. I think the way this is looking right now does look very clean, but of course you could go and clean up these edges maybe a little bit more. Um, but for the most part, I think it looks pretty spot on. Like this, you could not tell like at all, in my opinion. Um, but let's go into the next one. So this is the clip we're gonna be using. Boom. We wanna start like the second the hands move, right? So we'll put a little mark right here. Here. And boom. That's where we'll be done. Boom. Okay, so this effect on this one Honestly, it's my favorite effect. I think this one looks so cool. But once again, this just goes to show however many clips you want to actually put in here and render out is how good the video is actually going to be. So, but it all kind of depends on how many frames are you willing to actually render out for this. So I'll probably do maybe like five frames just to show you guys, because if not, it, like the first one I did took forever, took so long. So. Let's do this one. Do this one. Okay, that was way more than five. Can go here. And then drop all of these in here. Make things a little bit easier and quicker for this tutorial. We'll go right here and let's just do a head and see if this works. Sometimes it really did not work and sometimes it worked flawlessly. It all kind of just depends 
on what you're going for. This is a very zoomed out clip, so it's trying to render all of this, but see how it will kind of give you a same like render of everything else, but it will change your face. So which one looks the best? I'd honestly say probably just this one. It looks the weirdest, honestly, in my opinion. So now what we're gonna do is go here. And the way that I was able to get a lot of these is I will just go here to the robot head, click on this one. And what I do is go file and do export as PNG, paste. And now we'll make these from, so it's gonna be one and one, save. This will be file export as PNG. And this one's gonna be paste one and two. It's gonna be file export PNG, paste one and three. So depending on how many renders you actually wanna do, you could be here all day. If you wanna go quickly, you could not be here all day. It all kind of depends on how much you're willing to put in. Mm, simple as that. Hey, AI, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blew my mind, hey, AI, hey, 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 hey. That was very cringy. Nine, two, I said I was gonna do five, I did 10, or almost 10. File, export, PNG. That's because of you guys, you know? I really wanna sell this effect to you. I want you to learn, I want you to grasp how good this technology is. So now you can go here. You should all be good. There we go. That looks better. And now you can go here. Drop them all in there. We can go media start on accident, but I fixed it. So we can go here now. Okay. So now we're gonna go here. 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 Oh my god. Okay, for right now, I think this is pretty good. So now what you can do is select all of them, snip them up, and now they should be in order. I think, I really hope so. Because then I can pick and choose which ones I want and which ones I don't want anymore, which is a good thing. Okay, let's see how it looks now because that took way too long. I'm not gonna lie, that is not bad at all. I'm telling you, the longer you spend on each and every one, it depends on the actual outcome. It looked really good, but once again, that was a pretty quick edit. We could definitely spend more time on each and every frame. So let's go into the last and final one. It's gonna be the car one. Let's do it right here. So this will be the mark and this will be the frame. So we're gonna open Photoshop now again. So now we'll take our car one and drop it in here. So if you wanna remove the car and actually get something that looks pretty similar to the car, all I would do is kind of outline the car and it will give you a pretty good... Okay, that was very sloppy. But once again, I think it does give a pretty good outline to like what a car could look like. So now I just go car and let's see what it gives us. And that works perfectly fine. So this is where you can get a little more specific and say you want like a, let's do exotic car. I don't know if they know what exotic is. Let's see. You could put supercar maybe, maybe that would work too. Again, it's the most generic way you could describe something with like the fewest words I feel like do. Okay, for example, what is this? A futuristic car? Okay, let's do race car. See, okay, that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. So now you have all of these to pick from. So if I wanted to, I could do maybe even like 10 of these and just complete export them. I don't really like these that much. Yeah, so I'll do everything, everyone besides that one. File, export, PNG, and we'll do this. And we'll do car, copy, and every single one will just do one. File, export, PNG, paste two. Take these, drop them in, and go here. Organize by media start. Yeah, so we gotta make them tiny, tiny. Probably like every one frame maybe? Okay, yeah, we'll just make them each one frame. And go here, delete, delete, ripple. 
lip balm and this is what you end up getting let's see how this one looks it should look weird just to kind of show you that you can change the cars like however you want you know so it's not that i don't like my car or anything but with this tool you really can drive whatever car you want and it can really look like anything don't get me wrong i feel like it does make whatever object it ends up putting in there a little bit blurry so sometimes it doesn't look as realistic but then sometimes i do it and i swear i cannot tell a difference so kind of depends on how you do it but these are the three ways you can change things with adobe generative fill ai is like the way of the future so if you aren't using it it's not that you're behind but to use it is just such a useful tool. I'm telling you, some of the things that I used to have to edit and Photoshop would take me hours to days to edit. Now it's as simple as one click of a button, describe what I want, and it's done in 30 seconds or less. And that's the craziest thing about it. It's using these tools and assets to save you time. As a creator, it is everything i mean for example the video i shot earlier that you guys saw as like the intro clip none of that was like the video whatsoever i literally added all of that in just to show you guys it wasn't like anything was part of the video i hope you guys like this i know it was a long tutorial lame uh we get it but go use it and if you do please tag me i'd love to see what you guys create and if you guys like this video or this type of video tutorial like let me know because I would definitely make a lot more of these. I have a video coming where it not only breaks down my whole workflow, um, certain softwares I use to color grade, everything. So if you like this one, stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to sit down. I should not have stood during this tutorial, especially generative fill. It just takes so long. It's worth it, but it takes so long. Oh, help.